but on Twine 2.6. In this video, I'm going to cover adding interactivity as part of Sugarcube 2.36. Now, we already know as part of other videos we have seen and knowledge we have gleaned through working with Twine, in particular working with Sugarcube, that we can use links and passages to create interactivity in a story. A reader clicks on links and moves to different passages. However, there might be situations where we want to improve on that or add to that additional interactivity. We can start to do that by working with a macro I'm going to cover today called Link. However, before I get there, let's review a couple of concepts we're going to need to know before we get to that particular macro. So as we've seen in previous videos, we can use the set macro to create and change the values of variables. And this becomes incredibly useful as we create more complex stories, and in particular as we deal with data during those interactive stories. So for this video, as we move into thinking about the link macro, let's remember that we use the set macro to change the value of variables. In fact, as we're thinking about that, let's go ahead and look at a particular example. So right here, I have example one, and I am creating a story variable, the very first line right here. And I'm also using the macro I'm introducing in this video called link. So as we've seen in previous videos, we can use links, the two opening and two closing square brackets to create a connection between different passages. We can also use macros to do the same thing. The link macro allows us to create a link and then do something when that link is clicked. This is incredibly powerful within Sugarcube, and many of the advanced patterns we will get into in later videos circle back to the same concept we're covering in this one. So before we go too far, let's look at how this works and kind of talk through it, and then I'm going to show a particular pattern of using it. So we have the link macro. Notice it starts on this line and ends on this line, and we've already seen another macro, the if macro, that has a very similar construction. And then notice something a little bit strange inside of this. I am changing the value of a variable inside the link macro. And in fact, as I mentioned, we will increasingly see code that looks like this within Sugarcube, as we're using other macros, link macros, and some of its sister macros to do very similar patterns. In this particular case, I am telling this to increase the value of example plus one and then setting it to example. So set example to example plus one. And notice this is inside the link macro. When we see this, and I'll run this example here in just a moment, we will see the text increase value. Notice this is in double quotation marks. We will then be able to click on the link and the link will do something. Now let's go ahead and run this before I go any further. So we see increase value and we're clicking it. And as far as we know, the value of the variable is being increased. However, we don't see that change as a reader. And so this is where a little more advanced knowledge of this particular macro comes into play. So the link macro does something called silent execution. And particularly the adverb silently has very special meaning in earlier story formats. Sugarcube is based on those earlier story formats and adds many other things, but it also carries some of the terms defined in these other story formats into itself. In particular is the term silently, and this has special meaning. This means ignore all possible output. So if we wanted to put something inside of this, and then we attempted to run this, we will never see that text. No matter how many times we clicked, it is silent or running silently and ignoring anything we put into it. So this creates a little bit of a problem because we want to see that immediate change. Now, thankfully, Sugarcube has multiple ways to approach this issue. One of the easier ones is something I'm going to about, something I'm about to cover in this video, and then in later videos we'll approach the others. So along with the text to show to create the link, we can also tell it a destination to go to when the link is clicked. That is, we can recreate the two opening and two closing square brackets format we've already seen using a macro. However, this is where things get a little bit interesting because whatever is inside the link macro will be run before it goes to the destination. And this is where the link macro in particular can be incredibly useful. So let's look at example two and talk through what this looks like. So I'm creating again a story variable example, setting it to one, and then we have a link again to opening to closing square brackets to example two. Over example two though is where things get interesting. So we see the current value of the story variable example, 
we see again the use of the link macro increase value, and then after it, we see the destination. Now, this is where things get really interesting. The destination is the same passage. So, in other words, every time the link is clicked, the set macro inside of it will be run, and then the link macro will go to the destination, that is, the same passage. In other words, every time the link is clicked, the entire passage contents will be refreshed. They will be rerun by Sugarcube. So this means that we will instantly see the changes every time we click the link. So let's go ahead and see this in practice. So if I go ahead and change to example two start, okay, and then let's go ahead and jump in. So we see example two, current value is one, current value is two, current value is three, and we can increase this or decrease it in another example how many times we want. In each case, though, notice that the destination of the link is itself. We are coming right back to where we were, right back to where we were every time the link is clicked. And this is an easy way to create instant feedback when particular using the link macro in this way. Notice every time it's clicked, we are changing the value of the variable using the set macro based on information we already understand. And then we are now introducing the link macro into that understanding, creating text for a reader to see, and then a destination of that link, which of course can be the same passage we're currently in. This particular pattern I just showed is very powerful and can be incredibly useful for many use cases. However, there is a small caveat. We need to remember that it kind of requires two different passages, or at least two different passages to create. That is, we need one where we create the values, and then we need one where we change the values of those variables. So in this case, I'm creating a variable in one passage, and then we are moving to another passage that's then refreshing itself. Now, we can get ourselves into a bit of a problem if we were to create the variable in the same passage we are then refreshing, because every time it would refresh, it would be resetting the value of that variable. So again, this does require at least two passages to create this pattern, but it is a very useful pattern once we have it set into place. One last thing I want to mention, in addition to the problem I just outlined, is just Remember, and this is echoing a caution as we use story variables, that we want to set them early, generally in the first few passages of a story, or as we get into some more advanced SugarCube knowledge, special passages within SugarCube, so that they're already established and we can work with those variables without running to the issue I just outlined, where potentially we are resetting them on accident. So this has been a video on introducing or adding interactivity within SugarCube 2.36. Beginning to work with a link macro, and as we'll get into some of its sister macros, can really add additional interactivity where we're working with our existing knowledge of passages and links, adding into now our knowledge of the set macro, as well as building on patterns we've seen with other macros, and particularly the if macro I covered in a different video. Thanks for watching.